Hey guys, good afternoon to some, good evening to others. I am back to deliver a message from the Lord. Um, this message is actually attached to a dream that I had a day ago. Um, and when I woke up this morning, it was heavy on my spirit to release this message um, I honestly had a difficult time finding the time to be able to do it because there were scriptures that were coming at me and it was just hard, but my day other than that has been wonderful. It's been great. So I really pray that you guys have had a marvelous, uh, Sunday. Uh, again, I have sinuses and the only reason why I'm repeating this is because for those who are coming in that do not know, and they're going to say, why is she coughing so much? Is she okay? It's just sinuses. And so with my allergies acting up really badly, I get to cough in and going through. Um, they have been getting better maybe in the last day or two, um, but it's still some coughing that's there. So you'll hear that. <clears throat> and so I just want to say, excuse me in advance for that. But I must deliver the message. I'm going to deliver the message. I understand some people, they get to feeling some kind of way. And for whatever reason, they can't deliver a message. But I can. So I'm going to do it. <clears throat> and it doesn't matter to me how much coughing I do. I'm still going to deliver this message. <clears throat> and so that's that. Now, I have some scriptures that I need to read, and I also know who this message is for already. Um, it's for two groups of people. The first group of people, the message is if you're if you're if you're in this group, then you're you're pretty much on the Lord's side, and so this message is is in your favor. Okay, the dream is in your favor, the message is in your favor. God is fighting for you, basically. Okay. Uh, if you're in right standing with him, you're not straddling the fence, you live a repentive lifestyle, um, your heart is pure before God, um, then he's fighting for you. This is going to be a good message for you. Now, the ones of you who are against God, you're fighting against people's purpose and their destiny. You're causing all kinds of confusion and problems for the people of God. Uh, you're sending out all of these attacks. Uh, some of you were sending out attacks in the spiritual. Some of you are physically trying to harm people. Then this is not going to be a good message for you guys, but you need to stick around because you need to heed God's warning. You need to hear what it is that God wants to say. And you need to know that he is really not playing in this hour. He is not playing about what he's going to get accomplished and what he has set out to do. And he wants for people to know that. He wants for people to know that this is not the time. You know, he's given plenty of people time to retreat. He's given plenty of us time to get ourselves in right standing with him. And aligned to whatever his will is. Uh, he's given plenty of people time to repent. I mean, and some of you guys, he's gone beyond that. Uh, trying to get your attention and trying to get you to, you know, give up, you know, trying to live this life the way you want to live it and live it for the devil. He's been trying to get you to surrender to him. A lot of you people don't want to do that. You know, a lot of you guys who are following me, some of you guys really do not want to surrender to God. And so you are on, you know, the devil's payroll, uh, payroll. You up here, you're doing all this evil against God's people and you're not going to survive it. This is what the Lord is saying. You're not going to survive it. So I don't know which category anyone is falling into that's listening to this message, but somebody going to fall into one of these categories. Okay. And I pray that you're on the category where the Lord is with you and fighting for you. So I don't know how long this message is going to be. I'm not going to try to figure it out. Um, whoever it's for, you will know that it's for you. It's your message. If it's not for you, then it's not for you. If it's for somebody else, share it. Um, but definitely, you know, 
If God is fighting for you, I would say that's a good message for everybody. If he's fighting for you. All right. If you have God on your side, like how he was on my side in this dream, then he's definitely fighting for you. Okay. So this message would be a good message for you guys that he's fighting for. Um, and so, yeah, we're not going to worry about the length of the message or the timing of it. I'm just going to go ahead and go in to deliver what he wants me to deliver and then let everything else go how it's going to go. So we're reading from Daniel 3 verses 16 through 30 to start with. Um, okay. And the next one is Daniel 6. It's kind of lengthy. So you guys can go and read Daniel 6 in your own timing at some point. Whenever you get the opportunity, you should read it because that's the scripture that he gave me. So he first gave me Daniel 3, 16 through 30. And then he gave me all of Daniel 6. I'm not going to read Daniel 6. I'm going to let you guys read what he gave to me today, which was Daniel 6. And you guys know what Daniel 6 is about. Daniel 6 is about... Uh, <coughs> excuse me, Daniel six is about when Daniel got thrown into the lion's den. Okay. Um, and so we know that the Lord protected Daniel over overnight, uh, as he slept in the, in the lion's den. You guys can go check that one out and read that when you have the opportunity, I'm going to read Daniel three. 16 through 30 for you guys. Let me get a sip of water real quick. <coughs> and I repeat the fact that I uh, deal with sinuses really badly because for people who don't know what's going on, why is she coughing so much? That's the reason why I just... Somebody new could be listening and would want to know why am I coughing like that. And so that's why I'm saying it so that they wouldn't know. Um, Daniel 3, 16 through 30. And it reads, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king on Nebuchadnezzar. It is not necessary for us to answer you on this point. If our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship your golden image with your with you have set up, <clears throat> which you have set up. Now listen to how they how they spoke. Okay, L listen to how they how they spoke. They were about to get thrown into. <clears throat> this fiery furnace and they just said you know if it, it doesn't matter if our god deliver if he delivers us fine if he doesn't deliver us fine we're still not going to worship your false gods that's the attitude that the lord is looking for in this hour people who will not bow down to false gods people who are willing to say whether or not our god delivers us we are not going to bow down to anyone's false gods the Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury and his facial expression was changed to antagonism against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore, he commanded that the furnace should be heated seven times hotter than it was usually heated. And he commanded the strongest men in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these three men were bound in their cloaks, their tunics, or undergarments, their turbans in their outer clothing, other clothing, and they were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame and the sparks from the fire killed those men who handed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who handled them. So, you know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego wasn't burned going into the fire, but the men who threw the men were, they got killed. They got burned up alive. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego fell down bound into the burning fiery furnace. <coughs> the Nebuchadnezzar, the king saw and was astonished and he jumped up and said to his counselors, 
Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered, True, O king. He answered, Behold, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the form of the fourth is the son of the man of, of the gods. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you servants of the most high God. Look at how he's addressing them now. Come out and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out from the midst of the fire and the strap, the, the set traps and deputies, the governors and the king's counselors gathered around together and saw these men that the fire had no power upon their bodies, nor was the hair of their head signed, neither were their garments scorched or changed in color or condition, nor had even the smell of smoke clung, clung to them. They didn't even have the smell of smoke. They was deep in the fire and they, they came out smelling like no smoke at all. Like they had not even, they came out smelling like they was at a, 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 at a cool of the day, in the cool of the day at the beach. Like they had not even been near a fire at all. The Nebuchadnezzar said, Behold, blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants who believed and trusted in and relied on him. And they set aside the king's command and yielded their bodies rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make a decree that any people, nation, and language that speaks anything amiss against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces and their houses be made a dunghill. You see how quick that king changed that? After he realized how powerful our God was, he changed that whole thing. He made it so that anyone that spoke up against our God, they were going to be the ones that's going to be hurt. Okay, they're going to be the ones that end up dead. For there is no other God who can deliver in this way. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. So because of their faithfulness to the Lord, they got promoted. Okay, they were faithful even if it meant that they were going to die being faithful. They were going to be faithful no matter what. So even if he did not deliver them, they had already made up their minds that they, they would not serve any other but one God. They would not serve any other gods, okay? And so that's the attitude that God is looking for. And he's going to come through for those who carry that attitude. Mm. So now we're going to get into this dream. I'm going to talk about this dream. <clears throat> Not this dream. We're going to read the other scriptures. But of course, go back, like I said, and read um, all of Daniel 6 in its entirety, please. Because that's another one that he wanted for me to read, but it's very long. So I'm going to say for you guys to go back and read that. Um, so now the dream that I had in the dream, there was a storm going on. There was a tornado, there was lightning. It was all kinds of stuff going on. And when I looked out the window, <clears throat> the tornado was going around and just spinning, just spinning, taking up everything, taking up everything. I looked out the window. I saw some people running, trying to take cover. I saw big debris of things flying around in the tornado. And I could just hear the Lord saying, okay, I, I want for you to move the children from this big window. Cause we had like this big sliding glass, like window move them from the window over to this place, this, this area of the apartment. So I moved the kids to the area where he told me to move them. <coughs> and, um, let me see, I've written it down, but I can, I can, I can still remember it even without looking at what I, my notes about it, but I did write it down just to make sure I, I didn't, uh, forget anything. Um, so yes, uh, the tornado was taking everything up in the air. We saw all kinds of stuff going up in the air, like vehicles, trash, debris, um, glass 
everything just going up in the air. Um, I saw then a some type of sharp object come through the window. It came through the window as the Lord told us to move. And it just kind of crashed through the window. But it was like a very small crash. You would have thought that the debris that came through was strong enough to shatter the whole window. But it didn't shatter the whole window. It just came in that little, a little small crack in the window it made. Came through and then it just fell wherever it fell at. <clears throat> so I looked out the window and I saw rescue people outside, you know, in trucks and things of that nature. And they were kind of evacuating everybody, putting people into the trucks and all that kind of stuff. Because we had found out that because of this, due to the storm, we had a loss of power. So there was no power there. Um, some people were running behind the truck because they missed the opportunity to get onto the truck. <coughs> Excuse me again, guys. Um... So after a while, the storm had stopped. So we we were in the storm. The storm did not do anything to us. The storm had stopped. We were still in the apartment. Everyone else had evacuated. People were running, but we rolled the storm out. The Lord rolled the storm out with us. So I ended up telling the children, you know, we're going to go get something to eat. Everybody come get in the car because, of course, you know, we didn't have any power, so you couldn't even eat anything. You couldn't do anything. So I put the kids in the car, and um, <clears throat> we went on to get something to eat. So I stopped at the little shopping center. I uh, pulled my car over, and I saw that people were just looking kind of in disarray. People were looking for food, whatever, whatever. So I told the children, you guys sit here. I'm going to run in really quick and get us some food. So when I walked in, I realized the restaurant I was in, it wasn't what we wanted to eat. We wanted one thing to eat. They didn't have it. So we were looking for what we, what we wanted to eat. And I thought to myself for a split second, oh my gosh, I got my car running. Um, it's parked two, door, two doors down. So it wasn't that far from me. And I was like, what if somebody's going to come and snatch my car? Like the thought crossed my mind in a dream. Well, my children are in the car. What if somebody comes and snatch it? And um, they were old enough to sit in the car. But in my mind, it just crossed my mind um, in the dream. So I was like, well, let me leave out this restaurant and just go get in the car and talk to them and figure out, you know, what are we going to do? Because this restaurant doesn't sell what we're looking for. And so as I'm leaving out of the restaurant, I see some gentlemen run up to my car. One car was parked in front. So with some men that got out, got into my car, you know, they were threatening my children <clears throat> to do bodily harm if they didn't move over and this and that and the third. And so they got into the vehicle and I was yelling, get out of that car, get out of that car. I was like, these guys are taking my vehicle and my children in the car. So I'm yelling it. And I see a security guard sitting there at this table and there's some people sitting at the table with them, but they didn't move. So I was like, you know, whatever, these people are not moving. So then I went and I chased the car down. I couldn't really catch up to the car and I didn't seem frantic, but I saw my children's faces. I don't know how I was able to see, but I was able to see everything that's going on in the dream. So I was able to see my children's faces in the dream. And my daughter looked really petrified what was going on. And my son looked like he was just in a shock, like just in a shock. Okay. <clears throat> and, um, so I went on to chase the car as far as I could chase the car. And finally I just stopped. <clears throat> I just stopped there. Excuse me guys. One moment. Mm -mm -mm. so I just stopped and I said Lord I need your help and immediately when I said that the car I don't know how it came back but some type of way 
when I said that, the car just appeared back in front of me. So the men were in the car physically driving the vehicle, but the car would not go any further. It just, I don't know, it just came back to me. So when the car got back to me, the doors opened. Uh, a visible presence opened the doors and the doors both sides, the passenger side and uh, and the driver's side opened and blew the men out of the car. Y'all listen, like, like if you would think somebody was throwing somebody out of some place and they just picked them up and threw them, that's how it was. The doors opened up and the people flew like they just blew out of the car onto the ground looking like they were hurt like they were like in bad like they were in a bad condition okay and so the man in the back of the car he looked as though he wasn't going to just get up like that but he looked paranoid still but he looked like i'm just not going to get up like that so i told my son i said are you just going to sit let sit back there and let him you know make you fearful like this or what I said, pick up something and hit them upside the head and get out the car. Now, I don't know why I said this, but these are, you know, they're still children. So I don't know what in the world, but I said it in the dream. And my son actually picked up a knife. Now, this is going to sound kind of crazy, but I have to say exactly what happened in this dream. I have to say it. Um, so he picked up the knife because the guy had a knife that he was threatening my kids with harming them with the knife. So my son picked up the knife and stabbed the man. And the man bled out in the car. So he died in the car, which when my son got out of the car, he looked at them like, you better not. I could hear his thoughts. You better not ever touch my family ever again. Now, my son is not a violent child. Um, he's very humbled, well-respected young gentleman. Um, he don't like a lot of drama. He don't get involved with a lot of that stuff. Uh, he loves to, you know, speak about the Lord when it's the time when he feels it's time to speak about him. But he, for the most part, he's one of those kids that like to play his video games. He likes to just be chilled, uh, soft spoken. He just doesn't get into anything, but he's very goofy. When it comes to me, we share a very special bond. It's like a real silly thing between him and I, uh, it's such a closeness, but he's so sweet. You would not picture him being that way, but in the moment, of the time when it came to time to protect his family, he did what he needed to do to protect us. And so after that, after he stabbed the guy, the man bled out, I woke up out of the dream. And what the Lord was saying to me was that he's in everything with me. He's in everything with me you guys. Okay. If you are the guy, if you're the ones that are on the side of the Lord, he is in this fight with you. Okay. So it doesn't matter if you had to, if you had to go through a storm in that storm, you can trust that Jesus would be in that storm with you, which is why I did not leave. Everybody else evacuated. I did not have to leave because the Lord rolled the storm out with me. Okay. When the, uh, after the storm passed, I guess the people felt like they were going to take advantage. I, I guess they felt like because they knew we had come, we were all in this storm together in this community. You know, you still got some crazy people when things are going bad in people's lives. They try to find a way to still do things. You know, like what do those people call um looters? Looters taking advantage of everything. Uh, if it's a, if it's a riot, if it's some, something going on or a protest going on, what's the first thing you see these people doing? It has nothing to do with the protests, but you'll see them busting down stores and stealing things. Again, it's TV, sneakers, weaves, nails, fake eyelashes, and it has absolutely nothing to do with the protest. They just in it for what they can get. So I believe these men saw that they, he, they felt like they saw an opportunity because we were all had just come out of a storm to try to attack. Okay. And <clears throat> they felt, they failed at it. And what the Lord is saying is that a lot of these people are going to end up dying. They bought a weapon to harm my children. And one of the guys ended up dying. Okay. He ended up dead. 
And the other two men, when they flew out of the car, it looked like they had been in the fight of their life. So it did not look like they just blew out of the car and that was that. They were on the ground looking like they had been in a real fight, a real beat down, like they had gotten a real beat down. All right. The car doors supernaturally blew open. There was no hand there. They just blew open and it was like they were, uh, what's the word guys? Uh, they were thrown, basically they were ejected out of the car. They were thrown out of the car. Okay. So this is what the Lord is saying. Uh, when these people, when they come up against you and he's fighting for you, it's supernatural means that he's going to be using. There are angels that are assigned to you that will fight for you. Okay. And so you don't have anything to worry about. Just as long as you're walking upright with God, you have nothing to worry about because he will handle this stuff. He will handle this stuff. So when the people think that they're getting away with something, they're thinking they're getting away with whatever belongs to you. That could be anything. That could be your family, your children, your business, your destiny, whatever that it is that your promises, the things that God has promised you, they have to bring those things back to you. The enemy has to pay back to you. Whatever it is he stole from you, he has to bring it back. Okay. He has to bring it back. All right. The Lord's not playing uh, at this time. He's, it's not a game. It's not a game. And I'm hearing the Lord say there will be some casualties. There will be some people that are thinking they're going to outsmart God and they're going to end up dead using their own weapons. The, the weapons they're using against you is what's going to kill them. That is what the Lord is saying. Okay. So it would behoove a lot of people to fall back, just fall back. Just, you know, leave the things of God alone. Leave what God is doing alone. And if you're on the opposite end and you can't, you can't figure out why, you know, you feel like you want to get out here and harm people of God and stuff, it's because you have demons on the inside of you and you need to, you know, go for deliverance. You need to really be delivered. And if you can't be delivered and, you know, you like serving the devil and you like having these demons and things like that in you, and that's what you like. The Lord is saying that death is something that is coming. And this death is not the worst death that you'll have. He said that the death that's coming after that, which is the separation from him, will be the worst ever that you ever experience. That would be the worst. The dying of your body, dying and uh, decaying and going back to the dirt is not the biggest death. The biggest death is when you are finished, you are separated from God for the rest of all eternity, and you are burning in hell forever. That is the death that you have to worry about. Um, 34, Psalms 34 and 7 is the next one. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, who rever and worship him with all, and each of them he delivers. Okay, so that's Psalms 34 and 7, which is telling us the angel of the Lord encamps around us, which makes sense about why uh, those men, they could not take what belonged to me. They couldn't take it. God said, no, you're not finna take these children. You're not finna take what's hers. You know, and supernaturally, the men and I said, God, help. I wasn't even in the dream. I didn't even look frantic. I didn't even you know how most parents be like, oh my God, I wasn't screaming. I asked for help and the people didn't need help. The, the a whole security guard sitting there that patrols the uh, shopping center area did not budge. He did not move. And that's letting me know that there are a lot of people out here that should be helping you. They should be helping you when things are coming up, but they're not assisting you. And God is saying, don't worry about it. Don't worry about these people who have these titles and have all of this, you know, they, they, I don't know. They feel as though they're somebody in the earth, but they ain't got no power to catch people who are stealing from people. Okay. Or they're part of the problem. Put it that way. Cause anytime the security guard sits there and watches people get stolen from a parent, clearly you're not doing your job. 
Clearly, you're not on your job, okay? Yet, you're carrying a, a gun, you're carrying a taser, a taser, you're carrying all the things that symbolizes that you are a security person, but you're not doing your job. So, for him to sit there, he just sat there like nothing was going on, and God, the moment I called on the Lord's name, instantly, it was like, y'all should have seen this, oh my goodness. It was like, I mean, I, I, I suspect a hand picked the whole car up and brought the car right back to me. I did not have to get violent myself. I did not have to do anything. I just stood there looking at the car as the doors blew open and threw the men out and they were looking beat up. So some of you guys, they, they trying the wrong ones. They're running up on the wrong people in this hour. They're trying to beat God and they cannot, there's no winning. There's no winning. They're running up on people who God is with. And some of them know they're doing it, but like Saul, they're not going to stop doing it until they're dead. Some of them will end up dying because they refuse to stop. They refuse to let go. Okay. They refuse to stop what they're doing. So the last scripture I'm going to read here is, where is it at Lord? Isaiah 37. Um, Verse seven, behold, I will put a spirit in him so that he will, he will hear a rumor and return to its own land. And I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. I don't even think I'm reading the right one, guys. Oh yeah. Sorry, guys. That's the wrong one. Forgive me. That was definitely the wrong one. Isaiah 37 and <laughs> thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I was looking like, wait a minute, that ain't the one. Okay, so Isaiah 37 and 36. And the angel of the Lord went forth and slew 185,000 in the camp of the Azarians. And when the living arose early in the morning, behold, all of these were dead bodies. So the angel of the Lord is he the angel of the Lord went forth, okay, and killed all of these people in the camp. So that's telling y'all that God has that type of power. He has that supernatural power to take people out of here without having to do a thing. You know, we when you think about a person killing somebody or people going to war, they're using guns, they are some people killing somebody, they're using knives or whatever. Or if you go to war, back then they might have used a sword or they may use a gun nowadays when you're at war or bombs or something like that. Well, this is a supernatural thing that happened here. Okay, and the angel went through there and killed all them thousands of people. So the things that God is getting ready to do is a supernatural thing that's getting ready to happen. It's supernatural. It's something that cannot be explained. It's spiritual. And this is what the Lord is doing in this hour. Okay. In order to preserve his people, protect them and to get people to fulfill their purpose and their destiny, because there are many lives that are attached to people getting to where they're supposed to be. And this thing is not a game guys. That's why I don't associate myself with a bunch of foolishness. I don't have time for it because I have a different understanding and I've had this understanding for quite some time. Now I understand, granted, it takes some other people time to catch up to what God is doing. But for me, because I had long ago decided to separate myself from the noise of the world so that I could hear what God was saying, it either made me look crazy in others' eyes or it made me look like whatever it made me look like some other people probably saw oh oh the hand of God is on her they probably saw it but then he had some people were still playing with God and God had to show that this is not a game this is a child you do not play with and this is how God it feels about a lot of you guys you are a daughter or a son that are you're not to be played with okay God backs you up on a whole nother level than when he would back up somebody else okay so something they might have did to somebody else it might have worked they might have got away but when it comes to you, his son, or you, his daughter, it's certain things that are not going to fly with God, not in this hour. So I pray that this message has encouraged somebody. 
I'm glad I finally was able to deliver it, guys. Um, God is something else. God is God is going to protect his children, guys. He's going to protect you. He's going to protect you, but you just got to stick and stay with him. You know, you don't move in fear. You don't move in worry. You don't move in doubt. You move in faith. And you trust that if God has kept you for this long, he will continue to keep you. And you uh, employ or, uh, uh, you know, you employ your angels to fight on your behalf. Okay. And you pray so that when the help is needed, all you have to do is say, help God. All I did in the dream was say, help God. Help God. That's all I said. And instantly they had driven off at the speed of lightning with my vehicle running lights and everything else. They had driven. They were far gone and the vehicle got picked up and, and was brought back to me with the people in the side already beat up. With my son showing signs of a warrior in the dream. Okay, so this is a quiet child that, <coughs> that demonstrated he's a protector. He's also a protector. So somebody's got some kids out there that will protect them. Somebody's got some, somebody's raising some young men that's going to be warriors for the kingdom. Somebody's raising kings. Somebody's raising men who will fight for their family. Somebody's raising men that are real men. That are real men. Mm, I feel the Lord on this. Somebody raises a real man out here, okay? And it's not all the time that it's the uh, the men that become uh, strong in God uh, because it's a two-parent home. It's all based upon what's in whoever's raising them, okay? So if you are a woman of God and you're single and you're raising a young king and you're raising him to be a defender and you're raising him in the things of God, they're going to be men that protect and defend their homes. Okay. They're going to be men that follow after God. Okay. Men that understand their roles in the earth and their roles as heads and leaders of their families. All right. So women be encouraged. If you are a single parent, I do pray for the ones of you who want a, 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 a spouse the right spouse that God has for you, that that person will in fact match who you are and that you don't go out here and get somebody that does not match your spirit, does not match your vision, your dreams, does not match your heart for God. Don't even connect yourself with that because then that means it's going to be a horrible blend. And then, you know, your children are going to be even further confused by that. So it's best to just wait on the Lord to bring you what's best for you and what's best for your children if you are a single parent. But if you are a woman that's raising your son by yourself at this time, be encouraged because not all men that aren't raised with the man in the house turn out bad, guys. It's only by God's grace. I'm telling you, it's only by God's grace. I'm, and a praying parent, a praying mother that will weep and cry over her child and pray over her child. That, mm, I feel the Lord. A praying mother that will pray heaven down for her son, that will get her son to where he needs to be. All right. So I don't know who this message is for. I pray it's helped somebody. I'm so glad that I got it delivered to you guys this evening, y'all. I I pressed. I pressed. The coffee kind of subsided as I was talking. Devil's beating me up with that cough a second ago. But uh, like I said, I, I'm a presser. I press on. When it's time to get something done. I don't care what I feel like. I'm going to press through it. Okay. So listen, guys, I love you all with the love of Christ. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Um, and be encouraged, be encouraged because God is fighting for you. He is fighting for you. It doesn't matter if you're in a storm or in a fiery furnace, wherever it is you're going through, God is fighting for you. As long as you're with him, he's fighting for you. And those of us who he's fighting for can never be defeated. So again, take care of yourselves. Have a blessed rest of your evening. And I'll see you back here with another message whenever the Lord downloads one into my spirit. God bless you all. Bye.